Well, hello, thieves! Here we are in the age undreamed of for what will be our season finale. We are taking up once again steel. We are going to fight some dogs, and we are going to see exactly what Conan will learn from his mentors here among you, the thieves of the age undreamed of. And as they are his teachers, and as they are the ones that will guide the future king of Aqualonia. Let's meet the players first. We'll learn about their characters, and then we will see what this finale has in store for all of us. Let's drop straight down to Steve. Steve, how are you doing today, buddy? I'm doing good, buddy. Thanks for asking. I, uh, I'm excited for this. I, uh, I think Pal is probably not. This is probably his most confusing adventure as to date because he's not sure exactly what he's doing what's going on and uh what he's going to do so we'll see how this uh plays out he is a thief and he is out out for uh whatever he can get for himself pretty much and hopefully he can get what he wants okay well that's a really good attitude to have uh let's drop down to mark i'm sure mark's slack your character doesn't share a similar attitude to that of pal uh who are you playing why, of course, I am playing the mighty Schwa. Schwa is also a scoundrel, but more of the lovable type and uh, full of all kinds of personality. Schwa is four feet tall and agile, not very brave, but incredibly explosive personality. And uh, my name is Slack. I'm excited to be here. So let's do this, man. Season finale. Ah! And with the ah of schwa, let us go over to our young scholar who has, who's not troubled in any particular way. <laughs> <laughs> Ethan, how are you doing today, buddy? And who will you be playing? Doing good. Excited for, for finale time. I'm playing Kaser, uh, who is a scholar? We haven't seen him do much scholarly things. Uh, more weird, spooky, laying on the ground in the sand between dead people things. And wolf things, wolf things. Definitely a scholar. Not a not a scholar. Scholar. We're gonna go with it. We're good. So as we go from our scholar uh, straight up to somebody that's much more defined in their role, Emma, how are you doing today? And who are you playing? And are you a scholar? I am. I am. I am a scholar. Uh, Zerga is most definitely not a scholar. I'm very happy to be here. This is my first ever season finale of anything ever that I've ever been a part of, and I'm very happy about it. Um, I'll be playing Zerga. Um, she is a mystery cultist. We learned last time uh, she knows how to party. Um, you know, I don't know what else you guys do, but, you know, that's, that's, you know, if you don't have an evening that begins and ends with Sigi and Dune meet, I don't know what you're doing. Um, yeah, I'm excited. She is a uh, interesting person to play. Very different than me, uh, but also definitely not evil. That's where I'm going. That's where I'm ending. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so from our scholar to definitely not evil, we go up to our final thief. Ozzy, how are you doing, my friend? And who will you be playing to round out this illustrious heroic group? I am great. I am excited for this, but also a little bit sad, but it's going to be the finale and nobody's going to know how exactly it's going to end. I will be playing the amazing Zafar, um, a, um, a merchant from uh, Zamora who uh, deals in all kinds of wonderful things and uh, alchemical um, tinctures and um, remedies and that sort of thing and uh, he looks a little bit like this um, um, which, um, but he's bigger his turban is bigger and uh, his beard might, might be also be a bit bigger um, but it's a it's a good approximation right that's like the JV version of Zafar mm. uh, the true Zafar has the much larger turban and the much fuller which is ridiculous in that picture uh, the beard is literally the entire guy's chest down to his waist but uh, Zafar is Zafar 
So as we have learned about all of our thieves here, I will ask you, audience, this is how you can help. We are going to be playing the Modifius 2D20 system here in the age I dreamed of. Uh, it is a asset-based kind of grab your 20-sided dies, let them fly type of system. I have a pool of assets called Doom. The group has two pools, one a community pool called Momentum and one a singular pool called Fortune. They can use those to affect their rolls, give themselves more dice to roll, more damage on their attacks. Um, we are easing ourselves in in this first season into the 2D20 system. We've adopted several of the mechanics of it already. We will continue to do so as this session and future sessions go by. How can you help? If you look down in the doobly-doo in the donation section, you can always give this wonderful group momentum, fortune. You can refill their entire uh, six-asset pool of momentum. You can make it worse for them by adding a monster, monster in. But let me tell you, this is the finale. It's already pretty bad. So uh, why don't you just sit back as we recap what happened on our last adventure here in the Age Undreamed Of. As this is the second part of our episode 5, The Conqueror City, we were doing some carousing with the group as they were, as is the want of the thieves, drinking. And as they were drinking, doing Stygian doom weed and other foreign substances provided by the wizards and uh, the amazing Zafar, um, Conan was learning quite a bit. Uh, these lessons that would take him well into his battle days and his hardened bar nights as he will be able to experience just what it takes to be victorious in both fields of battle. But as this went by, several other interesting things happened to the thieves, whether by themselves or in a group. The Amazing Zafar, accompanied by Conan, who is 16 years old right now, went out into the city and actually saw a presentation a show being put on by somebody that seemed to be impersonating him. They too called themselves the Amazing Zafar. They too claimed to have been taught by the same mentor that taught Zafar. However, before a full-scale confrontation could be waged, members of the White Company, a mercenary group of high renown, arrived and took into custody the false Zafar. So questions there remain just that, as the answers are as elusive as the age undreamed of. Now, speaking of elusive, we also had two of our members, the mighty Schwa and Pal, wake up as any good knight should. They woke up dead, or at least in preparations to be laid to rest. They were inside a temple. They were being prepared to be laid to state, as there were bowls and anointing oils and wraps being applied to them. Having no clue how they arrived in such a state, they quickly regained their possessions, put the ever-living fear of gods into the poor girl who was charged with, or tasked with preparing them. Uh, under threat of death, she was to tell no one of their presence. Schwa, maybe his presence swaying Pal from doing something truly terrible in a house of the gods. But as they left and returned to the tavern, we had our final coupling. As the morning brought not the threat of death or the preparation of funeral to our two wizards, Kaser and Zerga woke up in darkness. And when they were finally able to illuminate it, they realized that there were two bodies in there that had been hollowed out. They had blood from fingertips to, not the corpses, the wizards, had blood from fingertips to elbows. There's a pile of organs in the corner, except, of course, for the hearts. They were nowhere to be found, but just for no similarity or, or nothing really that, that follows the line here, there was blood on the lips of both Kaser and Zerga. Um, they were also told of a city that existed in the mountains, and there they would find something called the Phantom Glass. In addition to riches of a more mortal worth, the phantom glass was something that would aid them in their endless pursuit of power. And as Zerga and Kaser are the only ones that can hear this voice of guidance, this voice that sounds slightly different between the two of them, but who communicates the same message, they return to the tavern, they convince the thieves that another adventure had been bestowed upon them. They did not tell them about the phantom glass. They simply told them of the riches. And as they headed out towards the mountains between Aquilonia and Namidia, they began to climb into those mountains. And where there was no trail a moment ago, 
and as they were breaking through the wilderness, suddenly an ancient paved path broke before them, with weeds splitting up through the cracked cobble. But as the sounds of their horses' hooves shifted from low-lying foliage and leaf to that of man-made construction, they realized a path lay before them, and that is where we will pick up this finale of Conan, Age Undreamed Of. And so, thieves, you are marching through the wilderness, or were, until just a few moments ago, when the click-clack of your horse's hooves started. And so, too, did your journey to this city, gifted to you by your wizards. What will you do? How peculiar. I'm turn, I turn around and see uh, if the landscape has changed behind us as well. Uh, roll an observation check for me. Mm -hmm. I'm prepared. <laughs> Anybody else that wants to look go. around too for different things may also roll observation. You just need to tell me what you're looking for. I'll be looking for traps. Thievery. Okay. Uh, Zafar, yep. you have two. One success was all that you needed. I will add that to momentum on roll 20 for you guys. I'll try to keep up both places so we can have a more, uh, a better reflection between roll 20 and, of course, what everybody sees on the overlay. Uh, you turn around, everything seems the same. Uh, the same landscape, the same weather patterns, where you just pushed through the kind of evergreens and the... Um, the lower lying kind of like rhododendron and stuff still seems to have marked your path with the horses. There are broken branches and mm -hmm. um, you can't see that there's anything that has changed other than this, this cobblestone path you can tell now from the vantage that you're in definitely wouldn't have been in view from any of the paths that you had taken to get here. So presumably someone could have traveled the main road and not seen this path. So it was hidden behind shrubbery and, and rocks and that sort of thing. Quite expertly so, yes. Interesting. Huh. Who knew this was hiding here all the time? What did the, what did Kaster and Zerga tell us about who sent us on a mission? I think nothing. Yeah, yeah. I don't I think <laughs> Well that's well, Pal would be asking that question right now. What who who sent us here? Who, who is our benefactor that told us about this mission, wizards? Someone rich. Rich as in some a, a great duke or a great uh, lord? That's no? very many questions. Oh, yes, because I, I, I'm starting to get suspicious of this kind of thing here. We're uh, maybe walking into our deaths. We're always walking towards our deaths. Or at least the unknown. Exactly. So. No, no, no. You two may be walking into your deaths, not me. <laughs> I'm running from my death. You're welcome to leave if you do not want what's in store. Well, what what is in what's store? in store. <laughs> what is in store? <laughs> I don't know, but it sounds like treasure, and I like that, guys. I like treasure, too. Come back, let us, let us, like, let us explore this wonderful city we have never heard of. People are, people are very adventurous. Think of the tales we were able to tell. I do not care about tales, I care about money. Oh, you're such a spoiled sport. Conan rides up beside Pal and claps him on the shoulder as he rides by and says, I will have both money and tales. See, even Conan gets it. Are you more of a coward than the boy? <laughs> Listen, I, I don't, words do not mean anything to me. I will tell you what means something to me. Me seeing tomorrow will be more uh, important than you calling me a coward. You should take that um thing that Zerga has then. The, the purple one. <laughs> it lets, it's weird. Don't. I don't actually recommend it. What the hell are you talking about? tomorrow it's fine it helps you stay up i don't see why everybody is so upset about this look i've already ended up dead once today i do not need to do it again uh, you're not yeah, running I'll, from your I'll death then <laughs> kicking my horse and uh 
carry on further up the road. Okay. We can sit so, here and wait and get paid, or we will go. Let let them babble behind me. So Zafar is riding off by himself. Peaked. Okay. Yeah. Zafar, you uh, clip clop ahead by yourself. Uh, Conan will kind of watch you go by, and he'll kind of turn his horse and wheel his horse around, and he's about the length or two behind you. As you kind of clip clop up the uh, road a bit, it begins to just wind, and you can see, given your earlier observation roll, it has. This is a very well-made road. This is something that you would probably see at the heart of Aquilonia. Um, it's definitely seen better days. I mean, the mm -hmm. sides of it, of like when it goes to an expanse over like a, a slight ravine and creates kind of a an X bridge. Whenever it goes over and everything, it, it, it's crumbling in parts. But if it were any less of a construction than what it was, you think that it would have already deteriorated it just speaks well to the craftsmanship of this road uh just how it's built and how it's um even though it hasn't been man maintained how it's been able to exist do i see any roadside markers uh you can roll me another observation as it mm -hmm. seems as soon as even the majority of the road has a lot of vegetation kind of busting up through cracked stones now but mm -hmm. you don't see anything that looks like what you would consider to be a marker that's uh, a one, and so it's a total of three successes. Okay, so yeah, with those, what I'm going to allow you to do is um, I'm going to give you guys another momentum, and I'm going to take the two successes that was required to see this, and um, you are able to... Let me give it to you right now so I don't forget. There we go. So Zafar, as you ride up ahead, and maybe it's out of the range of this conversation, and you're able to focus a little bit more, as Conan recognizes that you're intently staring around, he rides up silently doesn't say anything and a moment later you notice what looks like a kind of almost like an obelisk with a pyramidal top to it that seems to be lying in the grass and most of it is covered in moss and for a moment you thought it was just a fallen log but when you go over you realize it's some type of mile marker or distance marker look at that conan and uh i Dismount and take my uh, back and scratch the moss away a bit to see if there might be any writing. Uh, there is what you can, it looks like an arrow and you think that if it was set up, the arrow would be pointing upwards towards the, the height of this pyramidal top of this obelisk. Um, and you can, it, it's not in any language that you understand, but numerically, this is something that Zafar has a bit of a, a history with anyway, because of his background. It looks like the number six. You're not sure it doesn't represent the number six, but you see mm -hmm. markings that make it look like six. Um, you don't know if that's a, a, a name or a designation of distance, but it looks like there's an arrow and six. Hmm. Some. This looks. Does this look like a six to you, Conan? This is um, unusual. It's a uh, hmm. Yeah. Uh, he gets down, and you see his fingers kind of trace what you're outlining, and yes, it looks like a six. Uh, at least six of something. What could it mean? Um. Well, let's see if we find another one. If the numbers increase or decrease, that will might uh, give us a hint. Um, mount the horse again and carry on clip-clopping up the, uh, the road. Okay, and so as you and Conan continue to clip-clop up, we'll cut back to the group as they are at the head of the trail of the road. What would you guys like to do? After seeing Conan and Safari they start heading that way with them. Just, if Pal's not coming, Pal's not coming. <laughs> Pal grabs Schweitz and listen, if shit gets hairy, we take what we can take, and then we get the hell out of here, little man. It only gets hairy when you eat hair. <laughs> I have to get better company. He, he'll follow him. He'll be like, all right, let's go. I, he, you know, the temptation of money is, is too great for Pal. He's like a cat. He can't help himself. He's too curious. Okay, so as you guys begin to kind of trail up, you're staggered a bit here by, we would say, about 
40, 50 yards as at the head would be uh, Zafar. Trailing would be probably Pal and Schwa as they make their way up. And this kind of horse wagon training type thing as you guys are meandering up through the area. You guys do so for a while. Are you continuing to look around as you go, Ozzy, for another one of these? Yeah. That's uh, the idea. Yeah, you can roll me another uh, uh, observation. This time you only need one success because you know what you're looking for now. Mm-hmm. Yep, another two. So. Okay, two. I will give you another momentum since we're not out of the scene yet. Let's as, pull that momentum. Yeah, as uh, as Zafar is uh, racking up the momentum, um, you do in fact find another one. This one is a little bit easier to spot. It is kind of inside a bush that has grown around it, but you know what to look for. Once you have that kind of shape, that geometry in your mind, you can pass over and see it. And you go over and you see that uh, this one is a little bit easier to read because it was sheltered a bit from the plant around it and it seems to have five markings and it does have an arrow leading up ah, so uh, this might be a distance marker it's going in the same direction and the numbers are going down so we're getting closer to wherever we're going now are, uh, are you guys I'll take a look back to see if i can uh, see any of the others if they're catching up or not Right, I was just gonna say, are you gonna wait? They seem to be, yeah. they're moving toward you, but they're they are keeping, you're kind of keeping pace with your distance, so you'd have to wait for them to catch up. Yeah, with I'll, you. I'll wait for them. I would okay. always be checking for traps. He'll continue if I need to do that. <laughs> um, you, luckily, because you have Zafar and Conan riding out in front, not looking for traps, you're pretty sure there aren't any at least that far <laughs> up as they haven't tripped anything yet as they are going up the path. But yeah, you uh, you guys wait, and eventually you're all back together. Any change in how you're going to move up the mountain? Or Good to see you, pal. No, I'm just going on when they called up. What, what are you looking at so far? Um, we found some uh, distance markers. Uh, they're definitely pointing to wherever we're going, and they're getting closer. Um, how far was the distance between the two... Um, obelisks. Um, you would probably mark it as if you're with your observation kind of momentum builds. Um, I'll go ahead and give it to you. You're pretty sure that it would be roughly like three quarters of a league. Um, mm -hmm. you, it may be a full league, but it didn't seem like that. So it's you're not sure. You've only had one of these kind of stretches to measure yet. You're not sure if that's distance or just if there's some type of rhyme or reason to it. Well, we'll uh, look out for the next one. Oh, yeah. Okay. So as you go up, uh, Zafar, are you still leading the way? Yep. If, if someone wants to scout ahead, they will come to, but um, not in a particular hurry, in the same, at the same place we were, we were going before. Let's show go ahead. <laughs> okay, I will, but why? Because you're mighty and you like to do things like that. Oh, yes, I am mighty. I will go ahead then. Yeah, easy. And the pal thing, yeah, you go up there first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Schwa, you're going to ride ahead. How far ahead of everybody are you riding? I'm going to ride ahead ab about 50 yards ahead down the road and uh, seeing if I can see anything. Okay, uh, roll an observation skill or observation check as you're going up. You're just looking around for general, you're seeing the sights here. It's, it's pretty. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a really, it's a scenic spot. Um, you, it's getting a little chilly as the higher you guys climb. There is a definite grade as you guys are going up. You don't see anything that would like kind of piques your interest though. Okay, nothing. I don't even know what we're looking for, but I uh, can't find it. You're looking for a city. Okay, well, none of those cities are up here yet, but I will keep going. Just give it a minute and wait to see if he gets ambushed, then we'll go up there. <laughs> uh, at this point, Schwa, you would kind of curl around the mountain as you're going on like a blind side of a switchback. Mm -hmm. And you guys would lose 
sight of Schwab as he's about 75, 100 yards ahead. Great. I'm uh, spinning around the corner and I've got my spear out in my hand. I'm mounted, right? I'm, we're on horseback. So you I'm, are, uh, correct. Um, as we go around the corner, I'm slowing a little bit to see if there's an ambush there, but um, Schwa has no fear. So Schwa is moving ahead without too much, uh, to, without stealth. Okay. Yes, you are on horseback, or as Schwa would call them, future castle walls. Uh, so yeah, you go around the corner, and um, as you are prepared and you are not being stealthy, you do not see anything, but I will ask you to roll another observation check for me as you're in a different area. Okay, and that would take two, but you gain another one as these observation checks are helping you guys out quite a bit. You're now up to a community pool of four momentum, which is real good since you're two away from a full house. Schwa, as you kind of go around the corner preparing for a fight, and as your warrior eyes kind of look over everything, usually using your spear point as a guide marker, for a moment the sparse clouds break away at the top of the mountain and you see a city my friends my friends i see it a city below come now it is here join me we have found it you guys you guys can like Excellent barely gather. hear that <laughs> uh, on my horse a bit more i think how case there would definitely go join him so does Schwa see any signs of life within the city? Uh, you can't, it's way too far and it's up. It's up in the, like the top of the mountains from your position. You kind of like, as soon as you curled around this path on the switchback, the switchback cuts and goes back up uh, against the mountain. And because of its kind of increased elevation and the cut through like the, the foliage of the forest, it provides a V that you can see way up in the distance and you can see what looks like actual architecture. Um, it looks rather large. Uh, it's taking the, the, not just a mountaintop, but by the bridges that are going across, it looks like it's connected by several peaks. It's almost like some type of aerial city. Schwa's eyes are wide, and he yells back behind him, My friends, it is above us. The place we seek, and it looks mighty, as mighty as Schwa. It's a lot bigger. <laughs> <laughs> and with Schwa's indication, you can all see it as you come around. Fascinating. That is impressive. Zafar, you have been here before? No, I've not. Have I heard stories, maybe? About uh, an, an, an age-old city in this area? Uh, yeah, why don't you roll me a lore check here, because mm -hmm. this would be directly based. I will not tell you the success is required, yep. but uh, you may go ahead and roll it. That's one success. There is something. You remember something about there being a forgotten city somewhere in Aquilonia, but then you, you, for a minute, you're like, no, no, that's by the coast. It was swallowed by the sea. So you're not sure if you know of anything, uh, excuse me, you're not sure if you know of anything here in the mountains. I'm not sure I've heard anything. There's some, at least not up here of any forgotten cities. Hmm. Can we check for tracks? Kaiser, you are um, a scholar and learned man. Do you remember any um, anything from your history lessons? <laughs> are you asking me to roll, roll a check real quick? Uh, yeah, you may roll a lore as well, especially with uh, Zafar kind of prompting you. All right. Not, not much better. Yeah, uh, this time as you're thinking about lost cities in relation to the geography, it's like you, you, it's almost one of those things where you think I should remember this. I, damn it, I should remember this. 
you can't refute it, but you can't support it either. But you, there's just something in the back of your mind that says that there's something here. You just can't grab it. See if Zerga knows anything. She knows lots of poems and <laughs> creepy songs about things. Yeah, I'm gonna let since the, this is this is the wheelhouse of the wizards in Zafar. Yeah, go ahead and roll a lore for me. We'll see what we got. One. <laughs> yeah, you heard a poem about a city in the mountains one time, but you thought it was complete shit and have forgotten it. You remembered that like the, the title of it was like City in the Mountains and that was about it. And that's all that you can recall at this point. But the three of you together, as you are thinking about this, the one thing that you can kind of unconsciously agree upon is there's something should be here. You just, for the love of you, or you, can't, you can't remember what it is. Hmm. But let's see what it is then, if you can't remember. <laughs> can, can we check for tracks to see if anybody else has come through here, Jeej? Yeah, like you horse, can say that. Horseshoes. Yeah, uh, go ahead and take a look, and uh, you can. We'll say that you're doing this as the other of, are kind of like you know staring off at the city and thinking, and Pal would ignore that and look around for other stuff. So, what do you want? What do you want me to use? Thievery or observation? Observation. One success. Uh, you don't see anything else that would indicate tracks. However, this is cobblestone, so it would be difficult to actually see. Gotcha. It just seems strange to me that there's a whole city up here and we're the only ones that know about it. And you get this mysterious uh, job offer. I've been in these kind of situations before. I had to guess. Oh. The approach was well hidden. Which makes me think one of two things. Either this place is abandoned or it's entirely self-sufficient. Mm. Either way, we should be careful. Okay. I don't think I would have been given the job if this was a, a simple task. So you want to ride up through the front door? Absolutely. Of course. Since when are you so scared, pal? I'm not scared, Zafar. I am cautious. There's a difference. Oh, so you just oh. have to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, can we just go to the front door and I will check I will check around the, the back way there while you guys go through the front door. Right. Let's the do this. Okay, I mean, so it's still at, quite a bit away. So let's let's approach the city and see. And maybe we can make make something out when we're close. Corner and pal's not afraid of anything. Don't don't let them. Uh, I, 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 well, I, I mean, fears or uh, can be used. So I was taught that fear can be used, but uh, it's okay. As he rides up ahead, um, <laughs> as you as you guys are looking uh, so far. About the same distance between six and five, you find four and three mm -hmm. and two. And you realize the closer you get up this hill, the closer you get towards the city, the smaller the number becomes. So this is, uh, it, it doesn't correspond to any um, um, unit of length I'm, I'm familiar with. So it must be something ancient. Right. If they use leagues in... Um, then which what's what they do I now mean, that would be sort of whole leagues rather than three quarters of a league right it seems like it's 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 uniform in that it's about three quarters of a league it's not yeah. uh so it, it's definitely a different unit of measurement that's shorter than what is currently used mm -hmm. Interesting. so when you guys get to two and you begin to kind of cut back around what would be the last approach of this switchback before you believe you would be at pal's front door um you come back around and realize there is a huge expanse of this path that is gone it has been broken away and it is a sheer drop of about 150 feet down it looks as if some type of landslide some type of avalanche mm. some type of event perhaps something broke from above and took this road off um and so if you would think about it like this, with the path that you're on going this way, 
and then the path that you would want to go would be going like this. Mm -hmm. the, t the tip is broken off. And so you can see directly above you where the road picks up again. But it's about 40 feet above where you are, above the heads of where you are right now. Do I think I could get up there with Nimble as a cat and climbing? Yeah, you think you could get up there because the um, while it's it's carved to look for not really aesthetics, but it's carved for function of cutting the road into the mountain at some point in the distant past. Uh, there's still plenty of handholds, and it looks like it was scarred a bit by whatever event took out the road. You think you could actually climb on the cliff wall itself from where you are straight up? So we got to leave the horses. Is there something we can tie the horses to? Yeah, you guys can easily you know, make a slip knot and drop it over one of the kind of uh, fixtures that are along the mm. side of the road, or even one of the obelisks, which, you know, there'll be one relatively close. Okay, well, time for climbing. Schwa is very good at climbing. You follow Schwa, and Schwa leaps You can drop us a rope when you're up there. Climbing up. Okay, so Schwa... Uh, let me see. We don't have a climb roll, do we? Yeah, we do. It yeah. goes with athletics, I think. I think athletics is fine. I, yeah. Yeah. Be under brawn. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Give me that athletics. All right. Well, since we got some momentum in the pool here, I'm going to just go ahead and add one. Sure thing. I will take All one. Right. So one momentum used from the community pool. There's my roll. Okay, so Schwa, as you start Oops. to climb, uh, you get about five, ten feet off of the ground or off of the, the level of the road when one of your handholds breaks free and you go backwards. And Conan, who happened to be right there, kind of catches you as you come back and the rock k -k -k -k, clatters along the road and then drops off and the rock goes about 150 feet down. You hear that. Let, let me give this a try, nipple guy. And then if I get up there halfway, can I make like a nibble as a cat leap up to the top of the edge? You can give it a, a the old college try. Okay. Well, I'll use the momentum for us. Oh, zero successes as well on athletics. Okay, so you didn't actually use momentum. You rolled two dice on this. Oh no, well, it's it, I would have been fails for two of them anyway. So well, roll just yeah. So roll, roll one more die, or just roll your athletics again, and I'll take the first roll. Yep, which is still going to be zero. Yeah, there we go. Yep. Like I okay. missed it by one on both. Oh. oh. <laughs> Okay, so as you're finding out this wall is a little bit more difficult to climb than what you thought, um, there's going to have to be another way to have a workaround here as climbing doesn't seem to do the trick. How, how high up is it? About 40 feet. I'm fresh out ideas. <laughs> we can't get up there. Mm. If people had to come down this pathway, they would have had to mark something nearby. You said there was an obelisk nearby? We just there... passed one, yes. I'm... I'd like to double check to see if there are any annotations on it from people passing through, like giving advice on how to get up here? Well, there used to be a road, it's just fallen away. And uh, even the, and the obelisks are quite old as well. So uh, they probably were in, the whole thing was intact at some point. And right. if, if that, you now if the road broke away after the city was abandoned, then there wouldn't be. But you know, I could 
to 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 search. Um, what Sava is going to do is to see if there might be if there are, Paul and and, and uh, Schwa were trying to get up the sheer rock face basically. And so far as it has a, has a look around, if maybe there's a, a longer way around somewhere. Uh, you can go ahead and roll an observation check. And Kaser, were you still going to go back and give it a shot? Just, I mean, it's yeah. literally like 20 yards back around the corner. Right, yeah. Uh, okay, so yeah, observation from uh, Zafar as Kaser, you get around there. Roll me an observation check, Kaser. Okay. Uh, a one and a 20. <laughs> alternatively, I also have um, linguistics, if that would apply. Uh, just just asking. Yeah, just roll observation for right now. Cool. One. Okay. Um, you get back and look at the obelisk, and there doesn't appear to be any type of notations on it that would indicate, hey, here's an easy way to do it. Kind of like what hikers would leave one another whenever there's a washout ahead or a fallen tree or something like that. Um, you don't see anything like that, but um, when you look around, you hear a voice that says, you're getting close. Use your power to get up there. Which one? I have not been gifted such a... such a power. Then it is a good thing you are not alone in your pursuits. Kind of. Nod, nod to myself, <laughs> and then I'm gonna go find Zerka. <laughs> yep, you are able to find her as I'm assuming she is still where you left her. Yeah, she's trying to remember that poem, and she's petting her mule. <laughs> there, you've made pathways before. Yes, I have. I think that's necessary. It's awfully cold. I don't really want to get naked this time. Well, let's see if Zafar turns anything up. Right. If I have to, I can. Uh, Zafar, you see that uh, you kind of, with a 1 and a 20, you kind of convince yourself that what you saw originally was correct, that mm -hmm. the path has been eradicated almost as if it were cleaved from the area. And because of the construction that was used to create the road, there isn't any kind of natural way around it, as it looks as if the road was cut directly into the cliff face, and mm -hmm. now with its absence, there's just a void. We need to build a, we need a really long ladder. <laughs> no, nobody's taught the carpentry. I don't know if we have a ladder, but I do have a gate. We need it. Uh... There's no guarantee that it is safe, but nothing worth doing is safe. They're just going to a gate. A gate. Yes, a gate. You walked through a gate before. Like the one you built into the way of the teeth. Oh, I think there will be fewer bodies involved this time. Good. Let's oh, hope, because there's only so many of us here. But yes, uh, Zerga goes to her pack mule and she <laughs> takes out her little bit of sharpened horn and. Um, some some of the Stygian doom weed that she took from earlier, and she bundles up a little extra if she can because it's cold here, um, and she is going to attempt the um, to cast the eyes of Kuth uh, using one momentum to create a gate to travel to the dream world from the waking world. 
Okay. And uh, I believe it is a momentum spend to bring people with you, too. Is that correct? Is that what we're already... That's what I'm... Yes, I think. Yes. For X momentum... Wait, that's a display scene of horror. That's not what I was looking for. Um, yes. All of it's just so awful. It's <laughs> just so <laughs> It's just all so awful. It's just awful stuff. That's not. We don't want the scene of cosmic horror. We want something else. Um, <laughs> difficulty of casting is equal to the number of travelers who would accompany the sorcerer. <sighs> and then an extra momentum to leave a gate open. Okay, so here's the question. Uh, you can spend one momentum and do this basically yourself if your idea is to gate from here to up there. Or you can spend another momentum and bring someone with you. Mm. Or you can, you don't have enough momentum. You could, of course, yeah. give me doom if you wanted to just take everybody that way. No, that's okay. We don't need to do that. Does anybody want to come with me? It's this kind of thing. is it's just below my station, honestly. <laughs> anybody? I'm I go with you and I drop rope down for everyone else to climb. <laughs> Yes, that like would be that, great. I like that idea. All right. All right, mighty schwa. All right. I'm not sure how I cast this exactly. I'm all 20. We are going, it, it doesn't, what we're going to do is, uh, you're going to give me a sorcery roll, I believe, is what we did last time, so I can narratively figure out what I want to do here. Okay. I think that's how we did it last time. All right. Great. I'll roll that. With just two dice? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yay. Hey. Great. There you go. That's three. So you, um, we're going to say that you put back the two momentum that you just had. So you really didn't use any for that. And uh, what everyone else except for Schwa would see? Nothing. You see Zerga kind of, how would Zerga prepare? Was she going like crisscross applesauce? Is she like on all fours? What's her like, is she just standing um, she, there? She lies down on the ground like if this is a Victorian seance. And <laughs> like, just lies around um, and kind of starts like chanting, um, that sort of thing. Yeah, as okay, so what as- do, do I stand on top of you? Uh, just, just be around. <laughs> yeah, so Schwa, as you kind of take like a, a, an uncertain position beside the prone Zerga, the rest of you would see this as Zerga continues to chant for a minute, two, three. Schwa's eyes go open, close, and then when they open again, they're just pure white, as do Zerga's. And you see both of them, Schwa, who's still kind of at attention like a tin soldier with his spear, he lifts up the ground and his toes kind of drag a little bit on the cobblestones as Zerga lifts off and her hair kind of drifts behind her as it is brushing up against the cobblestones. But as soon as they are both elevated, maybe three, four inches above the stone, you see them just rip at an incredible rate and disappear into the wall that Schwa and uh, Pal tried to climb. They just literally go into it. Now, for Zerga and Schwa, you guys look around and everybody's gone, and there is a very pleasant, almost like London secret garden door there with wooden planks and a, a finely carved, like, uh, latch catch handle. And you guys go and open it up. On the other side, you see a really kind of a, an elevated view of where you guys are. The same cold, and when you step through, the door closes behind you, and you are now 40 feet above on the continuation of the path. And as you come to, you're able to look down, Schwa, and you can see 40 feet below, Pal, Zafar, Kaser, and Conan. Okay, Zerga, you now help me tie this rope. I drop down to them. All right. That is unbelievable. Head down there! Pal, you can hear me from here? Of course I can hear you. You're not that far up there. 
You help those smart guys climbing now, please. I got it, buddy. Maybe you could take him, like, miles away. <laughs> so he'll he'll assist Conan. Help help them climb up there. Uh, right. Um, so with the basically how this would work is you don't have to climb so much as um, whoever goes up can either Conan can easily climb up the rope and then when he's up there as long as somebody's holding on to the rope he can pull them up from up top. So. After a good 15 minutes, everybody that was down there is back up and the horses are secure at the lower level. Erica, that's a very good trick. Are you feeling all right? Oh, man. <laughs> very unnatural. Just double checking. Yeah, Zephyr takes a long time, and, he's, and when he's finally up there, he's completely out of breath. Uh, uh, I want to know how, to, how you do this. This is just too much work. Uh, sits down a bit, has a bit of a breather. Uh, Conan, during this entire thing, doesn't... He's seen this stuff before with Kaser and Zerga, uh, he doesn't seem upset by it, but he seems leery of it. Mm. And when he saw it kind of happen, um, he's not treating them any differently. It's just kind of a reminder of what they can do. I, think I would definitely be leery as well. I think Kaser would actually walk up to Conan after, you know, maybe while everyone's up and just like, Nothing is unnatural if you do it enough. I, I know. I, it's just uh, I don't understand it. It's, uh, it's confusing in that I, I appreciate that you can do it. I just, I don't understand it. Do you understand why the sky is blue? <laughs> no. I'll stay away from that too. <laughs> 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 Not not right now. Kind of looks up. I imagine we're very high up. Yeah, at this point, you guys are now almost like 200 feet above where... Because you, you were at 150 feet above the floor at the break. Now you're another 40 feet up. So you're a good like 200 feet and rising. And ahead of you, you can see there's one more switchback. And what looks like the entrance to some grand walled city. And from this level, as you're going up, you can see that it is a multi-peak type of town or city that is connected with, some of them appear to be broken and kind of dangling, but you can see these large expanse bridges, bigger than anything that you've seen constructed over, you know, rivers or gorges in Aqualonia. And Aqualonia is known to have the best type of architecture when it comes to this. This is something beyond what you've seen. I think case you just one one last turn to Conan before heading up. Just be like, never fear the sky, and then heads up there. Conan takes one second as he watches Caser leave, and he reaches into his kind of fur vest, and he pulls out this sheaf of notebook and a stick of charcoal. He opens it up, and in a section that he has kind of dog-eared. That is labeled Kaser. He writes, never fear the sky. And then he puts the charcoal in and puts his thing, his uh, kind of journal away and kind of, yes, up behind you. Um, mm. as, you all, as you all kind of go up and curl around this final switchback, you are immediately greeted with the fact that there is another about 10 foot break in the in the path and it looks at this 10 foot break that um just beyond it the the rest of the road is remaining and remains intact but there is another break and uh everyone roll an observation check for me please 
Okay, so Zerga, the amazing Zafar, and Pal, uh, and Kaser, as you all go up, and we'll just see if, um, oh yeah, and Conan as well, as you kind of all go around the corner, you see that, uh, Schwa, you're kind of invested in this break, as you're not kind of paying enough of attention around you, but as Schwa is looking around and, uh, kind of observing this, this new hazard, or this new kind of obstacle, um, the rest of you, almost as if on cue, turn and look up, and you all catch sight coming around the peak that you're on. You see this winged creature that looks as if it's a man. It's bipedal with these wings that are attached to the ankles all the way to the wrists. As you see this creature, <laughs> as it comes around the corner, and it bares its teeth, and you hear this... <laughs> And it jumps down and glides and lands behind all of you. But because you all were able to see it coming, Conan pulls free his sword and immediately steps in front of Zerga and if he can, in front of uh, Zafar and Kaser, kind of inserting himself between it. And as he pulls his sword up beside, he says, Protect the wizards! As um, this creature is going to attack. And Thebes... You have just met your first winged Doom. ape. So let's see what you can do as this creature has come to the attack. Um, I am going to spend some doom here because I want my creature to go first. What did you Why say about the sky? <laughs> what were you saying about the sky? <laughs> and so uh, what we're going to do here is because Conan has inserted himself between the wizards and everyone else, the winged ape is going to attack him. It's going to hit with one additional success. It's going to hit him in his left leg for Okay, Conan gets hit um, for three damage and you see the creature's clawed hand sink into the left muscular thigh of Conan as he ah, as he screams and you see blood kind of pierce from like four different wounds as it grabs him and holds on. Who would like to go first, my thieves? Let him go! Safar so screams and does a, fixes the, um, the ringed ape with his eyes and does a steely glare. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll the steely glare. Mm-hmm. Uh, Where are we? Sorry. Uh, we'll see. Uh, and I'm going to spend the momentum on this. We should still have one. You I actually think. have two. Yeah. So you can spend one and still yep. have one left. That's three successes. Okay, uh, you only needed one, as you will get your two momentum back, unless you want to convert those into additional damage that's going forward, um, or a damage and an action. Does that thing have resolve? Uh, it certainly does, and you're not quite sure how much it has. As it So, looks... I'm going to spend two momentum to reduce its resolve by four. Okay. And then I'm going to roll damage for my Steely Glare. Uh, reduce its courage, you mean? Like, it's... it's so uh, courage, yeah. yeah. Whatever the um, armor is for Resolve, yeah. Right, right. Gotcha. So that's... Ooh. One, two, three, four, five damage and two effects. So these... It's stunned. The stun comes in. Okay. And as you see it, um, and it receives a trauma as well. Right, uh, because of one of its special abilities, it does not receive traumas from mental strain. That's fair. Uh, it'll sit there, and it cannot be stunned by anything that happens mentally to it. So Aww. as it's sitting there, it does take damage. It takes damage yeah. the exact same way that you would expect it. But it seems to, because of being a creature that it is, it does not 
take the mental effects as it is a creature born of the nightmare. Does it let go of Conan? No. Oh. Technically, Thanks. if it had been stunned, it would have, but it was not. Okay, who do you get, uh, give initiative to? Let's give it to Pal because he can do something ranged, I think. Not in range, but Pal's going to try to, can he get behind it and like slash into its wings or anything that could, you know what I mean, like throw him uh, free cone and loose, melee wise? Uh, you can position yourself around. It seems to be very aware of its surroundings. Okay, so he is going to, how about if I, can I leap up onto it? You want to jump up on Jump up on its back and and try to okay. jam the and jam and jam down into it. Okay, this will cost you a momentum or a fortune. A fortune, you automatically do it. A momentum, you will roll. I'm gonna go. It. I'll go with momentum. Okay, so that's your last momentum as the group. Okay, if I get up there, can I attack as well, or does yeah. I, is that just my turn? You're spending the momentum to. This is basically like a setup action. Uh, if this succeeds, you'll be able to use your attack when you're up there. Okay. Three successes. Okay, so it would take it uh, was going to take two for you to get up there past its wings and everything, which you did. You're able to kind of straddle and wrap your legs around its like broad, thick, muscular neck as you wrap it around, and you can attack. What do you do, pal? Uh, I'm going. He's going to. He's going for the throat. He's gonna. You use the assay knife, and he's just gonna. He's gonna slash at its at its neck. He's going for the jugular. Okay, roll me an attack. Two successes. Okay, so that generates another momentum for you. You may use that one as uh, extra damage, as you've already used, had a separate action in this go around. Oh, I just, I lay into it. Wow, yeah, you do. Okay, and your effects are vicious, right? So that intense. just adds. It's intense. Yeah, intense. I don't know. I forget what intense does exactly. Uh, it, it intense goes off of something else, and I don't think okay. there was a setup action for that. Now, if there had been a stun, you would have critted that. That would have been eighteen damage. Yeah. But um, yeah. So with that, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine total. And so as you drag, just perfectly, you know, this would this would have decapitated. This would have yeah. decapitated most of the things that you have fought, but as it grabs into its neck, you feel that there is a slight pull as this this hide is a lot rubber. It's right. more thicker and rubberier, rubberier than what you would expect. And as you drag it across, it does open and begin to bleed, but not nearly the mortal wound that you believed it would. But you have you have given this thing some definite damage and you have given it a wound now that i only get one attack correct because correct. intense it it receives another wound oh if hey. given a wound is that what it is another if, wound if an intense attack inflicts one or more harm upon a target then it inflicts one additional harm nice so as you cut into this we're going to say that the two yeah. corners where you've taken the curved knife around were able to sink in deeper and blood begins to spray and this ichor drops over the the half moon of the shadow that bites as pal runs this across as uh the creature still holds on to conan though as my is there any way i can just jam a knife in and hold on to it like not enough for damage just to like sink in so he can keep on its back um <laughs> hey katie give everybody some momentum as you guys are back up to full katie thank you so you guys have six momentum now as uh it's back up and no you have used your actions so okay. you are set And who would you like to give initiative to, my friend? You guys, it should be reflected on roll 20 as well. So you guys Give it to pal. All right, schwa. Schwa. Get fucked, Mr. Wing Dave. Yep, that's right. All right, well, this is obviously spear time. So schwa leaps into the fray, and um, I believe, pal, you're on the back of the Wing Dave, right? 
So that that is correct. Okay, excellent. I'm approaching from the front, and I'm going just like full poke in the belly, uh, in the gut with the spear. Roll it, roll it, roll it. Okay, so as Schwa comes in, he misses with the two shots as uh, basically it hits that same type of rubbery mass that this creature's made out of, and the spear point just kind of skits off of a hip bone, not able to kind of pierce or puncture for any known damage. Um, you can spend a momentum if you'd like to go again. You guys are chock full of them. Absolutely, I'm gonna uh, go again. So let's spend one momentum. And I want to spend another momentum on my second attack. Okay, so you can, die. yeah, you can add an extra die. Yep. Great. Look at that. That's the second time we've had that. Um, so what that is, is it gives you two successes, but a complication. So I'm going to allow you to have the two successes. And normally I would uh, just have that offset, but I'm going to go ahead and give you the momentum and I'm going to take a doom from that because I want it. Alrighty. So you attack, roll some damage for me. plus effect which is piercing for you which is uh so that skits past it that's all three damage goes into it and with that you have given it another wound as this creature is bleeding from numerous places now after having suffered the mental trauma of uh the steely glare or the the psychic kind of uh enfeeblement that was given to it by zafar and who would you like to give initiative to now, Schwa, as you and Pal seem to have this thing sort of on the ropes? I'm uh, passing this over to Kaser. All right. I would like, so I can bet, I can spend a momentum for attack and damage, like one for each, right? You can spend a momentum to get a second action, and you can spend a momentum to add damage to the attack, and you can spend momentum to give yourself an additional die to roll against the attack. Okay. So you, I'm gonna, yeah, momentum, I'm gonna spend momentum spends an extra die. Sure, absolutely. Okay. Burn, burn some momentum. Where is that? It is here. Uh, a two with a one. It's good. That's two successes then as you get one of the momentum back or you can immediately put it into damage or the second action you wish to do. I immediately put it into damage. Okay. So let's roll. What, what's the modifier on that? Uh, go ahead. It's just going to be an additional damage point. So okay. if you roll like three damage, that'll give it a four. Cool. Oh, uh, which is exactly. Three damage. <laughs> <laughs> which is three. And I think you have piercing with your bow because that's the same thing Cinna has. And so as you attack, that goes through its armor, which means that you have swept through for the total amount plus four as you give this thing yet another wound as tell me with the arrow placement of this. I'm going is for, it? is it a leg that ha that's inside Conan's leg or an arm? An arm is holding onto Conan's thigh. I, I think I just swoop by and get it right in the shoulder then. Trying to get it to let go. Okay, so uh, with this shot, you hit it in kind of its right arm, its right shoulder, as it sinks deep almost to the fletching itself as the creature is just getting pummeled by you all. Um, you can spend a momentum to do an extra action if you'd like, as the damage has already gone in. Uh, at? You're at four. four. You guys have four. Uh, we good with me spending another, guys? Yeah. Okay, cool. Because, yeah. yeah. And then see if Zerg can finish it off. Perfect. This sounds like a perfect plan. All these weapons are in really weird spots. Like, why? why is... I know. <laughs> Uh, one success and the 20. One success and the 20 is a complication, um, which is fun because with that shot, go ahead and roll me damage as it is going to be a success. Okay. Four plus two okay. effects. 
which is both piercing, which means it goes past its armor. And so as you sink, where does this shot hit? And this is the shot where it does let go of Conan because it's dead. Uh... I, I wouldn't shoot for the head because that's where Pal is, so maybe like just under the arm. So oh, I'll let you hit the I'll let you hit the head. He's currently sitting on it like a kid that's like trying to get a better view of the parade. So if you want to drop this thing into its head and just scare the shit out of Pal, you can go right ahead and do so. Just double tap. Just <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Um, sure. Yeah, let's scare Pal. That's that's my favorite thing to do as a sorcerer. <laughs> okay, so as this arrow hits pal as you're kind of holding on right you can actually feel the feathers on the bottom of your left wrist as this arrow hits it right in like almost where it's kind of a simian nose meets the broad forehead you hear the crack of the skull as this arrow hits and feel you realize that if it were maybe an inch further up you'd be pulling this thing out of your forearm Jesus. <laughs> or not Jason Ball or whatever the uh... Bozzy told me last week. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you also feel it as you, uh, pal, you ride it down, and Schwa, you're able to kind of sidestep as this winged creature drops to the ground, and Conan's laying there, and thank you, thank you all. And as Conan's laying on his back, looking up at Schwa and looking up at pal, you see his eyes go wide as he looks up into the sky, a sky he was told not to fear. <laughs> Pal's like, is there something behind me, Conan? As Pal says that, everybody else that's standing can see five shapes flying in. Oh, no. Is there anywhere we can run to? Yeah. How far is the city? Is it the, is the gate of the city? The city's about 30 yards past the 10-foot kind of smash in well, the Well, Pal could oh, definitely... Yeah, the, I forgot about the... With Nibble the cat, could Pal, Pal make the jump? If you, I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said, bud. If Pal had Nibble as a cat, could he make a 10 foot jump? Yeah, you don't have to roll for it. So, yeah, you can uh, leave him if you want. We have to jump. We have to run for it. And Pal jumps over the thing. Right. I'm going to spend the fortune, and so far, that's the same. <laughs> I love because it. I am oh. not going to roll for that. Ozzy's like, fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay, so with one fortune gone, Zafar, you turn and leap as if your very life depended on it, which it might. And <laughs> since Zafar, you land on the other side, and I'm assuming you're going to continue to run towards the city. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so as you're the first up here, uh, Ozzy, have Zafar roll me a lore. As you come Ooh. up, you see the last obelisk, and this one has words over top of it, words you think you might know. Okay. Nope. What? I've never heard of them. Okay. So uh, uh, Zafar is across. Uh, Conan turns, and he's looking up, bleeding from, and he's looking at Pal and looking at Schwa, looking at Zurga, looking at Kaser, wondering what to do, as he's still on the side with the rest of you guys. Well, Pal's already leaped across the, the gorge. Okay, so Pal, you're running up there too? Come, no, he's, he's, he's gonna, Pal's actually gonna help you. Come on, he's gonna try to roll out his hand to, to help people to jump across the thing. Let's go! Okay, Because so... he needs them to survive. <laughs> Okay, so with Pal's outstretched hand, who is going to make the next jump? Zerga, let's go! Zerga will. Uh, can I spend a momentum to get an extra die on this? <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, oh, thank God. <laughs> okay, so as Zerga jumps, just as she jumps, there is a slip of her foot as she the, is she wearing her shoes yet or is she barefoot at this point or she's she... like she's got like 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 flip flops like like hyborian flip flops yeah. right okay so she's got like hyborian clogs on and as they kind of catch a bit as she slides she pitches forward pal i need you to roll me a as you were you narratively said you were waiting to make the uh the catch there in case somebody needed it. Um, 
Let's do a straight... Uh, let's you, you know what? It was acrobatics for her, acrobatics for you. This means you're gonna have to like slide way out. Okay, well, and, I'm, you know I got agility, so I can re-roll a die if I fail one. So I'm gonna take a shot at it. Can I use momentum? Yeah, you can use it on my side. Yeah, you guys are down the till. Yeah, I'm gonna have to use it. Boom. Okay, and that is three successes for you plus one so you immediately put three momentum back as zerga you see yourself falling past the level of the bridge and at the last minute you see uh pal slide out grab hold of some type of like reinforcement inside the broken bridge and his hand grabs your forearm as you guys swing beneath the the bridge as he is able to keep you from a 150 plus foot free fall. I try to swing her, back, swing her up on the cliff. I got you, sorceress! And try to swing her up onto the cliff. Okay, let me make sure I give you guys, you guys have five momentum now, thanks to that little bit of trickery. Pal? Well, you gave me acrobatics, which is was was a generous, uh, generous of you. <laughs> it was it was a terrible, terrible idea on my part. Um, okay, so uh, as this all happens, Kaser and um, Schwa, you would both see Zorga go over the side and Pal go down and grab her. As Conan kind of rushes to the edge, his uh, attention split between the descending winged apes and his friends that are now dangling off the cliff on the other side. I think I'm gonna follow suit from Safar and Cheat and just spend a fortune point. <laughs> hey, listen, man, well, that's a fantastic idea. Um, so, so uh, pulls out his, his short sword and jumps across and like uses it to catch himself on the other side. Okay, um, with the fortune, you can do it any way you want. It's an expertly done move uh, with a skill that you may or may not have expertise in, but you look like you're an expert in doing it. So you're able to like lightly land caser is there any are you gonna start running or are you waiting to try to help anybody else get up or are you just hauling ass uh try to help pal and uh zerga back up and get them ready for everyone else i'm, I'm waiting for people yeah okay that's all i need to know um i need to know schwa what would you like to do as you and conan are over there uh are you gonna tell conan to go across as these things seem to be diving now they have tucked wings and are like rocketing toward you guys. Conan, can you jump this? I can try, yes. Yes, you are strong. You can jump over this with no help from Schwa. I think so. Why are we talking? Is this a Go do it! And then Schwa takes a flying acrobatic leap, um, you know, all uh, no holds barred over the gap. Do I get to roll acrobatics for that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. All right. I'm going to put one momentum to give myself an extra. Let's do it. Boom. And so the mighty Schwa does not need the extra momentum as you guys are back up to six in total as Schwa flips effortlessly with a bit of a, a pole vault off of his uh, spear as he launches over and does a flip. And Conan, who runs with you all, um, makes it, but there is a complication. And the complication is as he lands and slides, he comes up and he lands, and as he slides and turns, he doesn't realize exactly where Kaser is. And Kaser, as he reaches out for you, you feel him like bump you as you're trying to help everybody. You're right there on the edge. I need you to make a acrobatics roll yourself as Conan has inadvertently kind of entered your airspace as he jumped. Acrobatics. Oh, I'm sorry. Acrobatics to Kaser. I'm sorry. Oh, Ethan. sorry. I missed that. Oh, no Shoot. problem. No problem. I'm going to burn a momentum then. <laughs> Absolutely. Nope. <laughs> okay, so 
with the mistaken kind of clip as he jumped across, Kaser, you spin, and as you were reaching for Pal, you start to fall. Pal, you see Kaser come right past you. Um, someone's going to have to grab or make an attempt to grab Kaser here, uh, and your hand is currently filled with Zerga. Zerga, you're going to have to grab Kaser here since you're the only one with a free hand. All right, that fortune point I didn't use before. Can I use that for this? <laughs> I was going to strongly recommend it, but uh, yeah, absolutely. So, Kaser, as you fall, you see Pal watch you as you zip past, unable to do anything as he's part of the chain. The next link in the chain, however, as you go past Zerga, Zerga grabs you by your arm, and for a second, all three thieves are dangling off of this 150-foot cliff. As Pal, you feel a tremendous strain across your chest as you're sitting there holding on to this combined weight of the two wizards. And uh, it's just a second later when you feel both Conan and I'm assuming Schwa reach down and begin to like rip Pal up. Um, we're going to say that uh, I'm going to... For the cost of one momentum, I will allow you guys to make it all up. Does that sound like a reasonable deal? Totally fair. Do it. Get me up, you little fucker! <laughs> <laughs> and so with four momentum, you guys are all being able to pull up. But now with your absence on the other side, the winged apes have kind of pulled and flapped and are gliding back around, moving and kind of circling for an attack. You guys have the city about 30 yards behind you. Are you running? Oh, hell yeah. Okay, as you're running, I would like Zerga and Kaser, since they have tried this before, and there is a poem just on the tip of Zerga's tongue, and there is a tale told just whispering in the ear of Kaser. I'd like you guys to roll lore to see if you can remember this sign as you run up. Okay, and so as you ride or as you get up here, you can see that um, ahead of you is a sign, and the sign dictates here lies the city of Kumula, where the righteous flesh is pleasured. I don't have time to dwell on that. We're, we're going inside. <laughs> so, Zorga, you kind of catch this. Kaser, you both kind of catch this. Um, it does give you both uh, maxes out the doom pool again, or the momentum pool again for you, as you guys are able to kind of put all this together. We are not leaving the scene, so you keep your six momentum as you guys go into Kamula, the city of pleasure. But as you rush inside, you realize this entire place is broken it's in ruins and as you enter this area with its broken ceilings and walls it's as if this entire rooftop of the world this mountainous city has shifted and cracked and it doesn't take any of you a roll to realize you know exactly what knocked out the bridge in the road. It was pieces of the very city that you're now standing in. And even as you guys are all running through, looking for something that has a ceiling to it, something that has some type of shelter, as you're running through this cracked uh, world, you can feel the subtle shift beneath your feet as if Kamula itself is not entirely steady. But I would like my sorcerers to roll sorcery rolls, please. This is a perception type role. This is sorcery, just for the. No, uh, I mean, sort of to see what's going on. Uh, than doing. Well, for them, sort of, as the perception is this both of you, when you run in, we're already maxed out on momentum, so I'm going to have you spend it to help you with this guidance. You guys both feel a hum as Zerga and Kaser. As soon as you breach what would be the 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 the, the least line of Kamula, as soon as you get into its proper its city districts and limits, you feel a draw, and it's about 
150 yards off to your right and you see a path that you're not currently on curve off in that direction you feel a strong pull as the suggestions in both of your ears are whispering that that way lies the phantom glass uh, go that way <laughs> yeah in case they're just looking at everyone else like we need to go this way is everybody listening it's, yeah are these things still chasing us Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You yeah. Can... He's going where he said. Yeah, definitely. Right. Yeah. And without any cool. need for an observation roll, when you guys are going through here, the stench of shit is overpowering, and you realize that this is probably the nest of the things that you guys are flying. They've probably taken over this city at this point. And as you guys are looking around and seeing just the remnants of nests and bones and various pieces of shiny and things like that. You don't see anything that looks like treasure that was promised to Pal and promised the Schwa by the sorcerers. Uh, you do, however, see a lot of death and the smell of it, of course. As you all turn off and head with Kaser and Zerga in the lead, Conan's running behind, looking up as you all trundle forward. Um, for a moment, there is what is like an extended archway that prevents you from being seen at the sky. Do you guys want to try to go stealthily or are you just going to go hauling ass as fast as you can? I would probably stealth because he's so good at it. <laughs> <laughs> he would definitely want to give them more distraction than himself. Yeah, if, if you're not in immediate danger, then more careful. So to um, get... You know, sort of, you know, get out of the flying apes' eyes in a way, in, in a sneaky fashion. Okay. So uh, how about everybody roll a stealth roll for me? And this is a party-wide stealth. So I have a certain number of successes in my mind. Uh, so even if you happen to fail it, if the rest of the party is good. Well, I'll use momentum then for myself because I'm so good at it. Maybe that'll help us. Sure. Any momentum left? You guys have five. You're maxed out. Or you cool. were maxed yep. out. I'll okay. use one as well then. One success, one complication. Looks like we all at least succeeded once. Okay. Yeah. So as you kind of all slide to a stop, you're able to wait and you hear the, the, the flapping and you hear mm. them kind of calling to each other. You hear that that almost that baboon like <laughs> as they kind of fly over and you, <laughs> as you, you just hear this different cries as they pass by at different heights and elevations but then it becomes distant as if they're circling and moving in, in a pattern where they think you should have gone and a moment later pal we'll say that you're at the edge and you look up and you don't see any shadows you believe that you guys can at least continue along this path without being seen the fucking eight mumpies are gone, I think. But their shit is everywhere. And you are right, pal. It is hairy. <laughs> I'm also right about their goddamn treasure, too. Or, or whoever. Bow treasure. No damn bow treasure. We're almost there. Another, another <laughs> ruin. Way to bring that back around, man, with the hairy shit. <laughs> All right, so as you guys are going forward, you hear the distant flapping of the wings of the winged apes. Um, they seem to have lost your scent, the, the proverbial scent of you all, as you go into what looks like a dome that has been cracked asunder. Uh, the dome looks like it used to have been made out of placed stone slabs with big expanses of wrapped and stained glass. But at this point in the history of Kamula, it is shattered and sundered, but there are still fragments enough to remind of a glory that once was. And as the glass above has been ruined, there in the center of this space, upon a pedestal, is a curved, almost like a lima bean shaped chunk of purple, smooth, and 
kind of translucent glass and it appears to be resting at an impossible geometric angle as far as balance is concerned. It should rock or sway on a pedestal in the very center of the room. And as soon as Zerga and Kaser come in, their travelers, their whispering companions, both say, There it is! The Phantom Glass! I would like to use Sixth Sense. Okay. An insight check. Go right ahead. And what are you insight checking? The glass or your companions? Uh, the glass too, or the um, the whole uh, area we're moving into where the uh, that pedestal is, to see if there's anything unusual about it and sorcerer sorcerers about it. So insight. What is insight? It's awareness. Here we go. And I'm going to spend the momentum on that as well. And I'm going to re-roll one of those d20s. Because this is what the sixth sense gives me. And a 12 is a miss. So it's one success. And if there's anything sorcerous about it, you need to tell me. Oh, I shall. Um, so as you stop for a second, Zafar, and Conan kind of thinks that maybe you're, you're hurt, you know, as he stops and kind of uh, uh, holds you just up. just sitting there and concentrating and uh, looking at that centerpiece quite intently. Um, you see that lima bean-shaped artifact in the center, but when you concentrate on it, you see that growing from it out into the air, almost like the splintered vine cross between chain lightning and the roots of a broad like pine tree. You see this cracked and smeared strikes of purple lightning going around it. They are unmoving. They hang like a web. And you can see that you are in some of them Conan, when you like, kind of like look at Conan, he's got a piece of it kind of going through his head and coming out the other side. Um, but it's extending away from this. And even in the parts of the Pleasure Dome that have cracked, you see them continuing out into space, the sky, which is not to be feared. Careful. This is not good. This is bad, bad energy. Do not touch that thing. It's it's touched us already. Can Kaser, I check? Go ahead. Uh, Kaser would take a step forward and say, if we don't take it, then this whole trip would have been a waste. What do you think it will... That thing? How or what it will give you and what, how it would help you. This is not right. It might be a treasure, but not a treasure we should seek. This feels like something we should destroy. It's powerful. Just because you don't understand I can it. see that. Just because you don't understand it doesn't mean that it doesn't have value to us. So you're going to use it for what? How are you going to put, protect yourself and us against it? I don't need to protect myself against it. I can control it. That's the point of everything we do, isn't it? If you can make it safe, then please do so. Pal's going to check for traps. Thievery. Go for it. I'll spend momentum too. Sure, I love the sound of it. And a complication. Two successes. Well, no, one success. Sorry. 
Okay, so I will... Oh, there it is. Okay, pop back in, sorry. Uh, so as uh, with the thievery, as you take a look in there, you realize that there were in fact many traps in this room, but they were sprung long, long ago. In fact, they're revealed. They're not even traps anymore. You can see the broken pl pressure plates and what would have been the footfall or weight distribution trap beneath them. Um, you know, you can point them out now. You can see that there's a discoloration with a certain stone they used for the traps. But yeah, there's there's none here that seem to be active. Schwa, what are you doing right now? Um, Schwa is uh, honestly getting a little bored, so he's starting to look around if there's treasure anywhere. That uh, purple bean up on the pedestal looks like it'd be worth a pretty penny. It's about oh, the yeah. size of a bag yeah. of rubies. Yeah. Yeah, you guys can walk right up to it. Uh, as uh, Pal will tell you, there are no traps leading up that way. Okay, Schwa is going to bravely walk right up to the pedestal. Will anyone stop Schwa from picking up the bean? Kassar stands a couple paces behind you. Don't touch it. But we came for it, yes? We came for the treasure. What we for. Look, this is a city, but it is as dead as Pal and I were a while ago. There is nothing here but this. We must take it, or this this will be a waste of time. And we Schwa. almost died. Schwa, if they don't want it, they won't share in the bounty. Schwa, do not touch that thing. But it is a bean. I do not fear a bean. Zerga. Pal steps, and... literally stepped back, way back. Zerga, both you and Kaser would hear, take the glass, take the glass, and power limitless will be yours. Zerga will walk up right to it without any hesitation and just pick it up, unless, unless Schwa gets in her way. Well, Schwa, Schwa is about to grab it, so are you gonna like get in front of him? Yeah, she's gonna get pushy. Okay, great. Okay, fine, you take it, but someone needs to get it and we get out of here to sell it. Zerga, as soon as your fingers touch the phantom glass, they sink about a quarter or a half inch into the actual surface of the glass, which makes it feel more like a gel but then it hits a substance as you are able to kind of pull it off of the pedestal. And as you pull it off of the pedestal, everyone sees the following. The sky begins to spin. You see clouds whisk and whip past the area over and over and over again. Darkness, light, darkness, light, darkness, light. As you look around, you see the floor tiles begin to come together, fix, and as the dome ahead, overhead reforms as bits of glass fly back up into place, and you see stone slabs crawl into an area where they once were held and as you're standing there and looking around, the entire dome and the city beyond reform. You see torches light into the walls. You see candled sconces, incense burners appear. You see furniture that had long ago deteriorated reform as if it's going through a rebirth from the decomposition that it was until the prior pleasure pad that it had been. And as it grows and reforms, you start to see blurs move through the area until everything slows and the sky that is not to be feared clips and freezes the sun directly above you. And as you all kind of feel a absence of momentum and you shift forward almost as if the, the world itself had stopped causing you to stumble a bit, you look around and you are in an area that is filled 
with people. And they all kind of turn and look at you. And as one, they turn and look at a huge man who walks forward. You would guess he's near seven feet tall. He's broad, dark hair long down almost to his waist that is streaked with gray and silver. His beard, while it does not rival Zafar's, it is magnificent. And as this man comes forward, older in these years, but bare of chest, covered in scars, he stands and looks at all of you. And a man comes beside this one, a man with the heraldry and rap of someone that speaks for someone with great power. And this smaller man with the shaved head looks at all of you and says, Who are you? Chua steps forward and speaks for the group. We are heroes, great one, and we are here. Who are you? I am the Vizier, and this is the Conqueror Call. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is where we will end this season of Conan Age Undreamed Of. All right. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh. Played by Kevin Sorkin. Amazing. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. Oh, this is such a fun game. You guys are awesome. I love playing this game. Um, all righty, all righty. So let's go around and talk to everybody. We'll go in reverse order. Ozzy, we'll start with you, my friend. How are you doing, buddy? I am so hyped. I just want to continue right now. <laughs> uh, as the chat said, there's a time fuckery going on, but um, yeah, you just pulled us through amazingly. That was that was so much fun. I love this game. This is great. Everybody is great. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to go into season two. Woo! Nice, buddy. Nice. Where can we find you online? Yep, I'm Oz. Um, Carl Hemd on Twitter, which is mainly where I live. Um, I pop up as guests on various streams. Uh, for example, I will be on Sophie Mai's channel uh, next Friday, playing Blades in the Dark. I'm, on the Saturday, I will be on Capricorn Cross's channel for our season zero, uh, season zero of the Disc World game. Fantastic. Awesome, awesome. Uh, Ozzy's link is in chat, everybody. Please follow him and see all the great stuff that he does around these here Twitters. I guess we'll see the Amazing Zafar next season as we drop down to Emma. Emma, how are you doing? And uh, how's Zerga doing? Zerga's great. She has a magic jelly bean. And... It, it awoke and awakened Call the Conqueror. So that's that's a that's a good day at the races for a mostly entirely not evil uh, priestess. This game is so much fun and so unexpected um, and so rich, and I can't wait for season two. It's going to be awesome. Um, I am Susie King 85 on Twitter. It's a long story that my name is Emma. It's Susie King 85. Um, I'm also the communications director for WebDM. So if uh, you should follow us there, WebDM Show on Twitter, WebDM Entertainment on Facebook, that's where you can keep up with everything that uh, the WebDM people are doing. Um, I the only other game I'm on is Starward Bound Spelljammer inspired D and D with Greg on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Central. So check that out if you haven't yet. Thank you so much. So great. <laughs> Fantastic. And let's drop on down to Ethan. Ethan, how are you doing today, buddy? Whoa, I'm Ethan. Uh, doing great. Uh, nobody died. That's always nice. Uh, a couple close calls. Nobody's terribly corrupted by purple energy yet. 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 <laughs> Um, you can find me at Superova Bear on the Twitter. Um, 
where I post everything that I do. Most recently, that has been I am streaming the North Seat over on Unmade Gaming on Tuesdays at 5 Pacific. Um, it's on YouTube, so if you miss it or there's other things going on, Tuesday appears to be a very rich night for uh, live streams, so. Uh, but yeah, it's been lots of fun. We're, we're running through the whole module that I wrote. And I'm trying my best not to just sprout lore everywhere at people. <laughs> it's the toughest part, isn't it, man? Well, you I think you really want to know more about this cottage. This was where so-and-so was born. You know, you go into the... No, I don't. I don't, you know. That's awesome, buddy. Great, great. Right. Please follow him online as Super Robot Bear is Ethan's handle on the Twitters. His link is there in chat. As we swing across to Slack, Slack, the man behind uh, the Mighty Schwa, how are you doing, buddy? I am doing absolutely fantastic. Folks, I want to take, thank the uh, the players and the, the uh, Game Master here for a fantastic first season of Conan. Man, if I had a great time bringing Schwa to life and getting to know you guys and playing games in the Conan universe. Uh, this is my first outing on Twitch and man, is it not gonna be my last? So I'm starting to look for games, start right about now. Um, so the only other RPG project that I am a part of is called Dice Tribe. It's a podcast brought to you by Encounter Roleplay. Here's the t-shirt. Yeah. So check it out wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, my name is Slack. You can call me Mark. You can call me Slack, but don't call me late for dinner. And check me out on the Twitter at actual Slack. Thanks a lot, guys. Nice, brother. Nice. And we will jump up to our final thief. Pal, you didn't want to be here. You were right. Everyone hasn't admitted that yet, but you were right. <laughs> Still doesn't right? want to be. Yeah. Pal definitely now doesn't want to be there. And he is going to, he is completely like what now we're you know pal's the person who wants to stay away from people and all of a sudden he's thrust into a court this is not good uh i appreciate everybody i loved it had a blast um i can't wait for next season thank you uh follow me on big pick fifty thousand. uh follow all these great people they're amazing uh i'm with you sunday night on project athena where we're getting close to wrapping that up for the season uh thank you have a blast Absolutely, absolutely. Yep. And uh, as for the channel here on Grimjack21502, we got a lot of positive, fun changes coming aboard here. Um, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to finish Firefly as of now, much like the TV show itself. Uh, our scheduling has been uh, corrupted. However, there are there's plans for a movie or what would be a four hour one shot. Uh, to wrap everything up in the future. But starting next week, we are going to play a little bit of Undead, or Outbreak Undead. Uh, it is the system that was created by Ivan Van Norman and the people over at Hunter's Entertainment. They wrote a real interesting little um, way to kind of insert yourself into the zombie narrative. You can actually go over to Hunter's Entertainment and take a personality test that will give you the stats of you if you were the character in that system. We've got a bunch of people that are going to show up, uh, rotating cast over the next couple of Fridays. We're going to take it into October with some zombie action. Uh, also, we have Projects Kronos on Saturday from 2 to 4 and Project Athena on Sundays from 7 to 9. They are in their penul penultimate episodes this weekend and their finales next weekend. So please catch those as much of the lore and much of the mystery will be revealed in both of those narratives. And then also on the channel, we have two brand new long form shows that will be beginning. Um, there is a mystery show, which I will be confident enough to say is D&D 5e, starting on Wednesday evenings. And then we have another show that is, uh, I'm not gonna say what it is yet, starting on Friday evenings. Both of them not DM'd by me. I will be playing in both of those. Can't wait. But until then, Conan will be back in a couple weeks. Please follow me on Twitter to know exactly when that is. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, best way to make sure is to just hit up the follow button, hit up the follow button here on the Twitches, and we will you'll be notified when we go live here at Grimjack21502. But I love these thieves. I love all my thieves. The thieves that have fallen, Torg and Rhoda. The thieves that are not with us as we get ready for Season 2 in what will be 
the age of the Conan age undreamed of. Modifius 2D20 did it well. Say goodbye to all these people. They'll be back soon. Take care of yourselves, everybody. We got to figure out what we're going to do with Call.